What makes a legend? How does ordinary become extraordinary? How can I be legendary? Welcome to Legends Only. Kirsten Karen Davila was born on November 21, 1970. She is a multi-awarded broadcast journalist with a career spanning over 25 years. She is a TOIM and Towns awardee and an advocate for women empowerment. She is a wife to her husband DJ and mom to her two sons, David and Lucas. How did Karen Davila become Karen Davila? Let's find out here on Legends Only. Welcome to Legends Only. Karen Davila. Grabe naman yung legends only over. <laughs> I told you it was the title of my special series and I thank you for saying yes. But I guess the inspiration for this series is really spinning that idea nga of how to be you po into how you became you. And so... I wanted to find out how Karen became Karen. And I want to go back all the way to your teenage years. Wow. wow. So in your okay. teenage years, the first topic I wanted to talk about kasi was haters. And in an interview I did with you way back in 2013, I don't know if you remember, let me quote you. I really had haters, girls who just didn't like me. Malakas ang dating ko. I always felt confident with what I could do. It was mostly that. I knew I had something to offer. How did I become Karen Davila? Well, unang-una to your listeners, I'm the eldest of three. And gusto ko to ikwento so they have an understanding why I am what I am, so mm-hmm. to speak. So I'm the eldest of three. I grew up in a middle-class family. I was born in 1970. No? You may have many millennial listeners. My father lost his job. And when he lost his job, I saw my mother take the reins at home. And what do I mean by that? My father was always there. But she was the one who suddenly had to start opening the business, start to look for extra income. She had to make sure that my punctuation. She was the one borrowing money. And being the eldest, I saw this. And when we were growing up, I mean, I love both my parents, Bianca, no? They were always fighting. And it's very difficult. And I think part of the reason I'm like this, I would have to say in my younger years, Palaban, it was also because I always felt that I had to fight for myself. I mean, my parents were good people, but it was just difficult. I didn't have what I'd call a rested childhood. So it's me, my sister, Colleen, who's also such a super achiever, and my youngest brother, Carlo. My mother nga always told me that nothing would be served in a silver platter. I think seeing my mother do so much, because my parents started to become financially hard up when I was in high school. I was in a private school, Coleo San Agustin, and it became quite difficult after that. So when I went to college, actually looking back now, why did I have many haters? I love the fact, Bianca, that you mentioned an early interview we did. But I was also different then mm-hmm. and I wasn't yet close to the Lord. Looking back now that my Christian life is more solid, I'd have to say. It could also be naisip ko, baka rin ang dami kong bagahe noon. That's one. Sometimes I realize that when you have a lot of baggage and also a lot of insecurity, you'd also overcompensate mm-hmm. by being extra tough, right? So looking back, Bianca, I did have a lot of haters and college was quite difficult in MassCom because I was misunderstood. I, I felt misunderstood. And it's the classic case of pag hindi ka kilala, ay ang landi mo, buisit ka, ganito ka. And I I remember joining a sorority then or a group in Mascom wherein they didn't like the answers. I, I don't know. I felt misunderstood and I was also scared to just be rejected. So I kind of got into my own little corner, which was that's how I became close to Kuya Kimatienza now. We've been close since college and uh, Lindy who was um, a friend since grade school. It's also why I strengthened 
who I was. So to to your listeners out there no na you're young, mahirap rin kasi if you're hated tapos magbabago ka ng sobra-sobra, 'di ba? Medyo titibay rin ang loob mo eh. And I'd have to say dun to me by ang loob ko that made me also when I applied for a job, I really wanted to succeed in my career. So it's two things, no? I knew I had to work so hard Bianca to become successful. That one I knew. There was nothing to fall back to at home. I mean, I had loving parents, but when I started working, we were all helping our parents financially as well. It's that kind of character na tinuro na sa akin growing up. Yes, super powerful story and I've actually heard this story before but you telling it again but now in a different frame of mind Karen parang nagdevelop na the way you understand how you were when you were younger so you've worked so hard which is why you're Karen Davila now but of course you are also Karen Davila the wife you are also Karen Davila the mother and a lot of the younger generation now they're more about this work life balance or work life rhythm i guess my question is how do you see now yourself working that hard before knowing what you know now but also having what you have now because you wouldn't have this if you yes. didn't do all that yes. yeah you know i love it that you asked that question because there was i love st- it that you're saying you love my question yes you know why there's a study that came out bianca that mm-hmm. actually said millennials and the gen z or maybe not millennials no baka gen z na and in that particular study that i read is they don't want to have a house they don't want to own a car right they are not going to fall into the trap that the boomers did, that their parents did. And all I want to say is fantastic, brilliant, 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 brilliant. And let me tell you why. The way we live is only an issue of mind conditioning. It really is. Now, is it bad or good? It's neither. It's just what it is. Okay. Can I be what the Gen Z are today? Absolutely. If I were in my 20s, I would work, travel, find the value in other things. But I didn't grow up during that time. So I can't relate, right? So that's one thing. But also, I want to tell the Gen Z, there's also a democratization of luxury today. During the time when I was much younger, plane fares were more expensive. Traveling was for the rich. There was no such thing as a cell phone. You know, to do the things you're doing now, you would be my richer classmate. Get the point? Yeah, yeah. But not anymore. Now you have backpackers traveling all over the world because of the democratization of travel. That's what's changed. The cell phones made everything cheaper, right? Even start a business you can do online. Look back at your parents. It was so hard to actually just do something. They couldn't be poor. Ito, you could have a little in your wallet and freaking go to Starbucks and enjoy this perceived life. But walang ganun nun. Walang ganun nun. So that's one thing you also need to understand, right? Gen Zs today enjoy this democratization of what is luxurious is more available to, right? The good things in life are more or less just more reachable, more attainable. Number one, yun. Number two, to the young kids out there, I feel it will be a waste of time. And this is like an ate talking. If you also don't make the effort to find your purpose in life, you know, to live an unpurposeful life is meaningless. You know, magsasawa ka rin. One day you will get old and say, when I say old, when you hit your 30s, you're gonna say, wait, what did I do, man? When you hit your 40s, it'll be worse. So don't waste the time in your 20s to discover things, to fail. You know why you're meant to work hard in your 20s? Because your body can take it. Mm -hmm. As you get older, you get weaker too. So there's a reason that that's the body clock where we live with. I think to your young listeners, this is what I have to say. Find the dream. You know, don't just go around walking on this earth and be a waste of space. Don't. Whatever the dream is, you know, be a good teacher. If you want to serve in a community, if you want to be a CEO, you want to be a healthcare worker, whatever it is. The point is, find the dream to be the best you can be. You know, you owe that to yourself. And then enjoy. 
right? Nobody said you couldn't enjoy, but you got a dream. You need to have a dream. Which brings me to my final question, which is something I ask all the legends. Wow. Oh my um, God. You were talking about finding that path, right? So how do you do that? What would your advice be on how the younger generation or even someone in their 30s or 40s to find what they are meant to do and the path that they should take? Number one, you need to listen to your heart. And when I say your heart, I don't mean you just listen to what you want. No, there is such a thing as you're listening to your heart, your whole being, an honest assessment of what gifts you have. You'll know it. You'll know it. In one person, I've always said you can be a singer, a dancer, an artist. Maybe you draw well, you're a good cook, but we don't know the future. And I get Manifesting is what Oprah calls visualization. The word manifested wasn't uso no, no panahon ni Oprah, but in her DVD on how she became. Grabe naman yung DVD ka. DVD. Yeah. I love Ima it. Age the age dear. <laughs> Oprah said, "I knew that the universe had this plan for me, and she didn't doubt it." Okay, let's change the word the universe had this plan for me, I didn't doubt it. I'll reverse it to, I have faith in God's plans for me. I didn't doubt it. It could sound the same thing, no? I mean, of course, for me, it's, I believe in God's plans for me. Number one, how would you find the path? Be open. Don't close your mind into one train of thought. I want to be this. Yes, it's important to have that. Try it out. If it fails, try again. Keep trying, keep trying. But don't be close to doors that open around you. That may be telling you, give it a shot. Give it a shot. You may be so shocked that you are meant to be somebody else you did not plan. And sometimes God's plans are better than ours. Most of the time, it is. I love that. That is the story of my life and that resonates with me so much. So, Karen, again, thank you for I sharing you, your life. I love love you. you. Thank you.